I'm Charles Boda, and this is your Diz Daily Fix for November 7th, 2017. Four film critics groups are taking a stand against Disney and supporting the LA Times by deciding to bar Disney films from end-of-the-year awards consideration. The four groups include the Los Angeles Film Critics Association, the New York Film Critics Circle, the Boston Society of Film Critics, and the National Society of Film Critics. Their decision comes after a controversial move by Disney to keep LA Times critics from receiving the traditional advanced screenings of their films. Disney's decision was motivated by what they say was unfair coverage by the LA Times in a two-part series that portrayed a tense and complex relationship between Disney and the city of Anaheim. Disney has claimed that the Times coverage displayed a complete disregard for basic journalistic standards and was a biased and inaccurate series wholly driven by a political agenda. Disney has a substantial number of potential blockbusters coming to theaters, and their decision to remove advanced screening options from the LA Times has struck a nerve with film critics around the nation. The series reporter, Daniel Miller, had said that Disney never asked for a correction of his story. Now, after Disney revoked advanced screening privileges, the Times said it would still review Disney films as they became available to the public. And in a show of solidarity, many critics and organizations around the nation agreed to review the films on the same terms as the LA Times, waiting for public screenings and refusing to provide advanced reviews. The four associations banning Disney from awards consideration released a joint statement, acknowledging that it was admittedly extraordinary for them to take any action that might penalize film artists for decisions beyond their control. They went on to say, however, that Disney brought forth this action when it chose to publish the Times Journalists, rather than express its disagreement with a business story via ongoing public discussion. Disney's response should gravely concern all who believe in the importance of free press, artists included. Uh, Disney and 21st Century stocks both experienced a surge after news recently broke that Disney was in talks to purchase Fox's movie studio and other significant assets. According to CNBC, Disney was considering buying 21st Century uh, Fox movie and TV production operations, the FX networks, the National Geographic TV cable groups, as well as Fox's enormous portfolio of international channels. Disney would have been prohibited from purchasing the Fox Broadcasting Company. FCC regulations don't allow for a single company to own more than one of the big four broadcast networks. And as you know, Disney already owns ABC. Disney's ownership of ABC News and ESPN could have made it difficult for them to take over Fox News and Fox Sports as well. I'm using the past tense there because Bloomberg has reported that their source close to the talks say that the talks are now over and the two companies couldn't reach an agreement. Both companies declined to comment on the talks, but they both got the benefit of seeing their stocks rise over the story, with Fox shares rising 8.9% and Disney shares rising 2.4%. Now, Guests frustrated with the occasional weather upsets in Disney parks could have some relief down the road. Disney just filed a patent to deal with the ever-present weather issues on property. The patents for a deployable shading structure that could be deployed manually or automatically remain hidden when needed and be themed to enhance shows over just its general surroundings. Now, the patent and pictures basically describe a pole-like structure with a deployable canopy housed in the interior. And sensors could monitor things like number of guests or weather conditions, like the presence of sun or rain, for automated release. Now, the canopy itself would be slightly water and air permeable to avoid catching the air like a giant kite, probably would be facing a bit upward like a cup of flower, and could be shaped to match its theme. Now, many patents are filed that never see the light of day. But given the issue of weather in the parks, especially the uh, chaotic sun and rain of Orlando, this one could make the cut. Now, a Walt Disney World vacation can be pretty pricey, but we can't let financial fears interfere with our fun. In today's featured article, Five Ways to Make the Cheapest Disney Vacation the Best, Mike Taylor gives you some insight on ways to cut costs without cutting enjoyment. Check that out today. Trending on the boards today is a thread where poster Purple Fern shares things I learned from my first trip to Walt Disney World. In the thread, she discusses her top recommendations and opinions after planning her first trip uh, first trip of her own, and other posters are joining in to share their take. Stop by the Theme Parks Attraction and Strategies Forum at disboards.com and join in on that discussion yourself.
Now, the Diz Unplugged Walt Disney World edition will be taking a break this week, but we will return next week at the usual time. Uh, check that out on DizUnplugged.com at 1 p.m. in one week. Uh, for the weather today, guests in Orlando will have a partly sunny day with a high of 85 and a low of 60, uh, 66. Those in Anaheim will have, also have a partly sunny day with a high of 76 and a low of 57. For information on everything I've covered, go to wdwinfo.com slash daily fix. And that will be it for me today. But join us again tomorrow for another installment of your Diz Daily Fix. Thank you.